Hey guys, welcome back to the 1010 Club. A dual purpose video today. I want to show you some new Haviston parade straps I got in, but I also want to show you how to convert a double underpass NATO strap into a single underpass NATO strap. So some of your smaller watches, like for instance, a Seiko SNXS can be put on a NATO strap without adding too much bulk to the way the watch presents on the wrist. Also, as you I'm sure have been able to tell there's some watches in the background. We're going to do a little bit of a strap fashion show with these Haviston straps when we get them out of the box. All right. I also wanted to use this opportunity to show you the difference between a high grade, a premium NATO strap and one of your bargain basement eBay straps. These Haviston straps costing about $29 US. There is a discount code I will share with you. And you can get these eBay straps for like seven, eight, nine dollars. So is there really a reason to go premium? I think so, but let's look at them together. Number one, the packaging, of course, is gonna be upgraded. My favorite version of their packaging is this Altoid case that you get. And this one is hull gray. So I got two gray straps, one in 22 millimeter and one in 20. And then I got one green. And I already have another Avison strap, so we'll look at a bunch of different ones and, of course, check them all out on watches. So you get it in this Altoid case, and then, nicely wrapped in here, Haviston Milit Vintage Military Industrial Design. And here it is. Hull Gray is a nice name for this color, and I think it matches perfectly. Also, maybe a Shark Gray. I'm getting this for uh, a few different watches, including this Seiko SNXS. I think this is going to look awesome with a Hull Gray NATO strap. Another reason why I want to convert it to single pass is because I want to wear it with those smaller watches that really do stand a little proud when they're on the double pass. So Havison gives you a little bit of directions, position the watch approximately five millimeters from the under layer end as shown. Thank you for explaining it. If you haven't put on a NATO strap before, it can get a little bit confusing, to be honest. But once you get it down, it will become second nature. And here's the whole gray. So I got them all in high polish. I think they're going to match my watches better that way. So you can get these in either a brushed finishing or a high polish finishing a signed buckle right there. As I said, I got all mine in high polish. So differences automatically off the bat that you can tell between this strap and a bargain strap is gonna be the texture, the feel, the material. So you can even just see, this is a coarser weave and it's stiffer. This is what they call a seat belt weave. So it's a lot softer, a lot more pliable. It's gonna feel a lot better on your wrist. But it also depends on what look you're going for. This on the left is more rugged. It's more tool watchy. Maybe you wear this with a, a G-Shock style watch, one of those beefier divers. I can understand why you would want this look versus the Haviston, which kind of gives a refined take on a NATO strap. Personally, for me, this is my style. So I like the kind of dressier side of a NATO strap. And I specifically have been looking for the seatbelt style texture. That's what we can call the Haviston strap. But again, it comes down to your preference. If you want a kind of stiffer, utilitarian, whatever gets the job done strap, the cheaper NATOs might be more to your liking instead. But for me, I like a little bit of luxury put on my NATO strap. So what I was talking about converting it from a single underpass to a, or sorry, from a double underpass to a single is getting rid of this extra little piece. Because when you put this on a watch, both of these pieces of cloth will be under the watch. So it's that thick compared to getting rid of it, having it be that thick. So that really can make a big difference on the profile on your wrist. We'll get to that in a second. But here is the first shark gray, sorry, not shark gray, that was my own word. My first whole gray strap from Haviston. And let's check out the other whole gray, a little bit of a different packaging. This one's pretty cool, the way it opens so you open it that way and they kind of have a puzzle for you to figure out with the instructions again so you do get a little bit more when you pay more not even just the quality of the strap but obviously a little bit more care put into the packaging a little bit more care put into the instructions they make you feel like you're investing a little bit which 
I do appreciate if you're spending $30 on a strap. And a lot of you watching really will not be able to uh, accept the fact that I paid $30 for one of these. And I get it. For a while, I was that person too. But when you have one in your hand and when you have the watches that are worth it, I really do think one or two premium NATO straps, if you are a NATO strap person, really makes the difference. So this is the 20 millimeter high polish hull gray parade strap from Haviston. And that's the one that will be going on the SNXS amongst others. Lastly, I have a green strap. Now, I already have a green parade strap from Haviston, and right now it's on my Seiko Sarb 035, but there's going to be a difference. This is a, a vintage strap. I believe it's called the 57 Parade. I'll pull up the name. So it's a little bit different than this one, which is just the olive, oops, olive number seven. So this, I think, is supposed to be a little bit more faded, a little lighter green, and the strap I'm about to unbox is a little bit darker, as you can see. So let's check it out. I had thought that this was going to be lighter, but it actually kind of seems that the new one is a little more drab. This is a little deeper in color, and this is a little bit lighter, although it really is hard to tell on camera. I'm looking like around the camera just with my naked eye, and this does look more like an olive you'd eat, and this looks more like a, a green. Now, this one, I believe it's the Parade 57, they're not making any more. So when they're gone, they're gone. And I really would suggest, this is definitely more of a military green. If you want a green, go for the 57. If you want kind of a drab, olive, tactical look that's not necessarily a green, it has more browns in it, go for the one on the right. All right, so those are all the straps. Now, let's go over how to convert them. To single underpass. So we're going to start with the uh, the cheaper NATO strap and then I will continue with those. So it's very very simple what you do. All you need to do is cut and burn. Sounds intimidating. It shouldn't be. So all we're doing is cutting and burning is cutting this off and then sealing it with heat. This retainer doesn't do anything except for add to the look of the watch. On the Seiko Sarb you can see it's this, it's this keeper here that isn't doing anything. It's really just this one piece of fabric. So we're cutting this piece of fabric off. So when it's gone, the profile of the watch will look like this. So do keep that in mind. If you like the metal keeper that's here, don't cut because this is what it will look like when you're done versus having it look like this. Okay, so first things first, we got to do a cut. So we're going to take the NATO strap, and this is where it is sewn in. So we're not going to go too close because we want to keep this sewn in. So these keepers stay and this strap stays. So we'll go pretty close, but not overly close. I'm going to try to get right there. Gone. All right. So now this strap is a single pass. No more extra piece of cloth. But this can fray, and if we can focus, we can already see that it's starting to right there. And this can happen and happen, oh, there goes some more, and happen forever. And we don't want this watch just to become a complete frayed mess, which it already is. Look at all that. Oh, there's more. So what we're going to do after we cut this off is we're going to do a little burn. So let's get rid of these first. All right, and then we're just going to seal it. So I'm going to pull this back to expose the raw cut. I'm going to grab a lighter. Here it is. Let's turn the flame up. Flame on. And just Ha! 
and that's it. So as you saw, I singed it. So it's basically like cauterizing, and now it's kind of just a little bit of melted plastic or melted nylon, whatever this is, but it will not peel back anywhere. And now I have a single pass NATO strap. Again, doesn't have that extra piece of fabric. And now when we put it on, and that's what it looks like on the single underpass. So again, it doesn't have that keeper there, but it also doesn't have any extra fabric underneath. It's just the one little piece of fabric. And I think this sits a lot nicer on the wrist. So that's the conversion. So let's check out a few of the Haviston straps now. So here is the new Haviston strap on this Citizen Caliber 2100. I think off the bat, it's pretty easy to tell the differences in quality. There's a luster on this strap that is not apparent on the other one, this kind of shine that I really like. Also, there's almost a two-tone stitching on the outer edges of this strap and it just feels better. This is very soft, very flexible. It feels a lot better on the wrist. The bargain NATO straps are stiff. They're not necessarily comfortable. They're a tool. They get the job done, right? So here's how the Citizen looks on the new Olive number no. 7 strap and let's check it out on the whole gray. What I really like about these Havison straps is, I mean, every NATO strap will transform the way your watch looks, but Having this kind of high sheen, a little bit of a classy addition to a standard NATO strap, the elevation of a standard NATO strap, it does allow you to wear it on a larger variety of watches like a high polish chronograph from Citizen. All right, let's check out a few more watches. Now, this is the one I was most excited about, my Orient Bambino, now on a 22 millimeter Haviston strap. I originally actually bought this first Parade 57 strap for the Orient Bambino, but I got a 20 millimeter strap for a 21 millimeter lug width. I thought I should go a little bit smaller than a little bit bigger, but there was a lug width gap that I ended up being completely unhappy with. So I vowed to myself I would get a bigger strap for the Bambino. And now I think this looks phenomenal. If we get in a little bit, you can see a little bit chubby it's a little bit girthy it spills over the lug a tiny bit however when you have it on wrist or if i'm just holding it down here very very hard to tell and way harder to tell that it's a little bit too big than it was to tell when there was a little bit of a lug gap which was unsightly all right finally let's get the seiko snxs on a whole gray strap And here we go. Here is the Seiko SNXS79 on the whole gray strap. Now, I said just before with the Bambino that I wished I had gone wider than thinner in the beginning, and I had to make the same decision here. The Seiko SNXS is a 19 millimeter lug width, which sucks, but that means I had to get a 20 millimeter width on this strap. And I do think it still works, especially it, it looks like it fits even better up here than down here. But as I mentioned, it has two pieces of cloth with which makes it a little bit bulkier. Let's look at it on wrist. So while I do think it looks good, there is that bulk and you can see the two pieces of fabric here, which also I think adds to the cumbersome appearance. By the way, one of my favorite parts about Havison straps is that they're not overly long. It's like a regular watch strap. I do not like folding back NATO straps. I think it makes it look that much extra bulky. So for Havison to make these kind of normal length, I really, really appreciate. I have a seven and a quarter inch wrist, so you can see at least up to an eight and a quarter inch wrist can still wear one of these straps. But Time to put my money where my mouth is and convert this Haviston strap from a double underpass to a single underpass, just like I said I would. Okay. I'm nervous, but I did say 
I was going to show you how, and if I can't do it or won't do it, then I shouldn't expect you to spend $29 on a strap and then cut it. So I'm going to go ahead and be the guinea pig. Wish me luck. Again, don't want to cut it too short to there. And hopefully by the end of this, I will be able to encourage you to do it because it wasn't so bad. But here we go, cutting off a good part of this strap. Here we go. and it's gone. As you can see, just like the other time, it is starting to get frayed already. Shouldn't be surprised about that. So let's cut those off and then melt it. All right, we have that. We have the lighter. And that, as they say, is that. So now when we put it on, I think it has a much sleeker appearance. There's no extra strap anywhere. If you remember, the double underpass would come here. Again, if you like these keepers and this high polish did match nicely with this watch, so having that there, did add a certain amount of design consistency and matching. However, now I can wear a smaller watch with this NATO strap, and I think it looks great. So that's it. That's the video. That's how you can convert a double pass to a single pass. And just to note, you don't feel this. Uh, when I was first thinking about doing this, I was wondering if this edge would feel rough or kind of dig into my wrist. But the way it fits like this, this is always tucked away next to the lug, so you're never going to feel any uncomfortableness. So you can rest assured that it will not get in your way, not add any discomfort, and you can have a sleeker design on your watch. Thanks so much for checking out the video. As you can see, I did it in seven seconds and it really wasn't difficult at all. This was also the very first time I actually did it, like I actually cut and I actually burnt. So if I, the guy with bumbling hands, can do it in one take, you can also do it and have a slimmer profile on your wrist with your NATO straps. Thanks again for watching a discount code for Haviston. It's not exclusive to me. I don't have a deal with Haviston. They just have it on their site. I'm just trying to make it easier for you. We'll be in... The description if you want to grab one of their straps but also like i said i'll put some links to ebay nato straps if you want to save some money and have just a, a more tooly looking nato strap once again side by side ten dollars thirty dollars two new videos at least every week thanks one more time to my wife for getting me these three straps for my birthday and i'll see you guys soon <laughs>